Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. I'm hoping you would be able to say that one of the primary goals that you have in your personal life is to be as healthy psychologically as you can possibly be. And part of that healthiness that you would bring to any relationship is that you would want your presence in another person's life to be an uplifting experience. It's not that complicated and it's not that profound of a thought until we begin realizing how many people don't think that way. Now, when we talk specifically about individuals who have a strong narcissistic bent, they have such a powerful need to be in control. They have such a low empathy towards other individuals. They have such an attitude of entitlement that we can't really expect them to approach you with that healthy mindset. Instead, the narcissists think that uh, you're supposed to help them prop up an image of what they want to be. And they want to maintain control over you. They want to stay in the superior position over you. And so one of the, the things that happens is not only will they attempt to build themselves up at your expense, that's bad enough. But beyond that, narcissists can actually make it their goal to say, I'm going to break you. And it's one of the most insidious ways of thinking that we can have. And you know, it, like I say, it's not enough to uh, for them to just say, okay, we differ and maybe we're not going to be a good match. It's like, no, I, if I can destroy you, then that enhances my well-being, if you can even think of that as being uh, any kind of logic whatsoever. And frankly, it pains me when I know that there are individuals who think this way, and I know that many of you have been on the receiving end of it. So what I want to do today is I want to talk with you about some, or I want to point out some of the tactics that these individuals use as they attempt to break you. They, they want you to be a shell of who you are. The more you're onto their tactics, then the more you're going to be able to sidestep that and go with your better alternatives. Now, I, I, I made notes on this, and as I was writing this down, I was just shaking my head because there are so many things that I can say on this. So uh, I, I do want you to, to hear this and know that I've, I've got a pretty extensive list of things that they'll do, but it's not, it's not a complete list. That's what's sad about it all. Now, as we look at their tactics, them trying to break you, the first thing that we're going to say is that narcissists are deeply committed to being critical. Now, they won't call it that, but their criticism is constant. Uh, that goes along with their need for high control, and so they can go into the micromanaging kind of thing. They'll give you advice that you never asked for, you probably don't need. And then taking it a little bit further, we're also going to say that they operate with a mind uh, that I call correctness over love, as opposed to love over correctness. In other words, being right, as far as they're concerned, is the ultimate good, when in fact being righteous means that they're superior in their mind, and there's no love in the way that they engage with you. Another tactic that they'll use is they'll pick away at your reasoning. How many times have you thought, well, I'm trying to say what, I, what is on my mind, but they can ask demeaning questions, and they can uh, say, you know, why in the world would anybody think the way that you do? Uh, another is they'll uh, use words and gestures and nonverbal communication of ridicule. You know, the rolling of the eyes and the the uh, the huff and all like that. That's one of their ways of saying, uh, you don't mean anything. I want to break you. I don't want you to think that way. In addition, they'll have lots of pressure toward you to conform. You have to think like me. And when you prove that you don't, then they're just going to keep uh, pressuring you to drop your distinctives and uh, and just come along with theirs and just declare, well, you're, you're the great master. I have to bow to every word you say. That's what they want you to think. That being the case, another tactic then that they'll do is they'll negate to you what makes sense to you. So if you say, well, I, I, I like it this way, or this makes sense to me, or this is my opinion, uh, they're going to go straight into the, let me tell you why that's wrong kind of mindset. 
uh, as part of their breaking you, they're very willing to argue. And their anger, when they start going into the argumentative mode, can be very ugly, which is their way of saying, if you want to come against me, I'm going to make you pay emotionally, and I'm going to make it miserable for you. That's how they think. In addition, sometimes they may not be openly argumentative. Sometimes they'll go into a passive-aggressive style of engaging with you. Uh, and they'll just be so impossible to penetrate and get near and, uh, and to, uh, to talk with and then finally, if you become argumentative in reverse toward them, then they'll point and say, see, this proves how broken you are. This proves how no good you are. And it try it's their way of trying to keep you off balance. Another of their tactics is that they'll go into the stonewalling mode. Uh, narcissists can be absurdly defensive, but somehow their defensiveness is tied to, in their mind, your dysfunction. And so, uh, you cannot penetrate them. They won't listen. They won't, uh, they won't uh, give any kind of credence at all to what you have to say. Uh, they always have a justification for who they are and they want you to justify who you are, but it's never going to be good enough. Another tactic that they use is they will demand your loyalty. And if they can't get their loyalty, then they'll demand your subordination. You have to be uh, beneath them. Don't you forget it. And they have many ways that they can convey that. Likewise, another of their tactics to break you is that they'll try to separate you from your support system. You may have friends or family members or uh, co-workers that really enjoy you and you enjoy them. It's like you don't need to be around them or they may sabotage you with the smear campaign. Another, and this is even more insidious, is sometimes they'll take the people that matter most to you, like your own children or grandchildren, and they'll try to turn them, those people against you, often in a sanctimonious kind of way. Well, I'm the, I'm the best person here in this family, and, and uh, they're, they're going to let the kids know that they're the best and you're awful, and so it's called parental or grandparenting uh, alienation. It's one of the most selfish things that a person can do, and, and people agonize when they're on the receiving end of that. In addition, another of their tactics is they can be irresponsible in their use of money. Sometimes they're tightly controlling, sometimes they're very wasteful, uh, but basically they tend to have double standards with respect to money, and you're not going to come out on the, uh, on the good end of that. Another of their tactics is that they can have pervasive uh, non-cooperation with you. It's another part of their passive aggressiveness. In addition, there's hardly any regard that they'll have for your boundaries, your distinctives, and you uh, having your own preferences is a nuisance to them, and so they won't go along with that. Other times, uh, they'll show no interest in the things that interest you. It's like, why would I care about that? I mean, if you like a particular kind of music, or if there's a, a, you know, just an activity that you enjoy, uh, they can think, well, that's stupid. And, and you know, whenever you pursue it, you're going to get the, the scorn from that. Another of their tactics is they can have irregularities in the way that they manage sexuality. And there are so many subcategories to that. I'm just going to let you fill in the blanks on that. Do you get an idea of what I'm talking about? There's hardly any end to the, the, uh, the mindset of the narcissist who says, I'm going to break you. I want you to know that there's only one person in this equation whose opinion matters, and it's not you. What you bring to the relationship with me is not adequate. You are not adequate. And the more they can get you to buy into the messages that go along with that, in their mind, life is good. Uh, and, and, I, and I've spoken with so many people who've said, I've just become a shell of who I am. It's like, yeah, they broke you. And, and now you're living in, in, in ways that you don't even like. Um, and I get it. Narcissists, strangely enough, feel like it's their burden in life to have to tolerate someone like you. <laughs> but, you know, they have this poor me kind of an attitude. Go figure. And then on top of it, they tend to show virtually no insight with respect to their own multiple dysfunctions. Instead, they persistently blame other individuals. They're constantly the victim, which means that you're constantly the villain. You're the one who's making life miserable. Now, early in a relationship with them, they may actually groom you with compliments and gifts and things like that. But in retrospect, you can look back and say, yeah, any, any of that nice stuff is actually part of their phony uh, chameleon effect. It was just all part of a game to get you under their control. 
So in the, in the midst of all of this, uh, and I know so many of you are shaking your head right now thinking so much of this resonates. In the midst of this, you can ask yourself, well, am I that repugnant? The narcissist will say, yes, you are. But then my response to that is, well, consider the source. The narcissist thinks that you exist to, to satisfy their fragile ego, and that's not exactly what I would call a good motivation for whatever they do with you. I want you to take a look at your alternate goal. And, and basically, you, you know that I say Dr. C, uh, DRC stands for dignity, respect, and civility. I'm hoping that your alternate goal can be that. I want to stand uh, upon good and decent characteristics. Uh, I'm hoping that you can uh, remind yourself I'm in the presence of a very broken person. The reason they try to break you is they're in a constant compensation mode for their own brokenness. And they, they like I say, no insight. They don't see that at all. But you're in the, in the presence of a very broken person. Breaking another individual spirit to elevate one's own is a terrible strategy for healing and moving forward. And it's the ultimate hypocrisy, but nonetheless, that's what narcissists will do. Reasoning with that narcissist will only worsen your problem. Therefore, I'm hoping you can decide, I'm going to individualize my efforts to be a healthy person. Let's go back to what I said at the beginning. Now, a goal of a healthy person is to be an uplifting presence in uh, uh, with, with other individuals. And it starts with you believing that about yourself. There's something inside of me that's right and good, and I want to share that with other individuals. I'm hoping you can say, I'm going to make that my goal, and I'm going to seek out other individuals who also share in that goal. And then we're going to conclude the narcissist is far too toxic in their efforts to try to break you for you to uh, allow them to be on your inner circle. Now, I hope that videos like this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. And, and uh, just please know, when I write notes like this and I uh, present these kind of things, my heart is breaking at times. And this is one of those. I, I, I hate it that you are in the presence of somebody that says, I need to break you and I need to just uh, you know tear you down. That, that's no way to live. But nonetheless, there they are. Uh, if you've not already subscribed, I would encourage you to do that so that we can keep more videos coming. And I hope you can be encouraged to be that better version of yourself, despite those people's presence in your life. Many times you can have a need for uh, for therapy, and I totally understand that. And I'm so pleased to be sponsored by the people at BetterHelp.com. And I've been with them for several years. I could give you testimonials of people that have uh, gained a great benefit from that. Uh, we have a link below that will take you to their website. And if that's a need that you would have, I would strongly encourage you to get somebody that can help you sift this out. In addition, I also have my therapeutic courses, and they would be like signing up for an online class, uh, multiple videos and written documents and guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making good connection skills, free to be finding yourself despite those controllers. This is me about setting boundaries. We have my webinars that have been presented, but now they're still available for you to, uh, to purchase uh, and uh, go over on your own time. We have my podcast, our website with multiple articles and my books, plenty of resources for you. Narcissists want to break you, but that's because they're broken people and it's easier to try to put on to you what they won't do within themselves. That's what you're dealing with. But I'm hoping you can see straight through that and you can realize my goal, in fact, is to be on team healthy, standing for dignity, respect, and civility. That's something that a narcissist doesn't understand, but they can't take that away from me. And if you can commit to that and lean into that direction, it positions you to be a person of peace.